I'm Kelly. And I'm Aaron, and we're Connected by Games. Today we're going to learn how to play the game Gizmos. We're going to learn how to set it up and how to play it. If there's certain parts that you're trying to figure out specifically, go ahead and look down below and we'll put some timestamps. Alright, let's get started. The premise of the game Gizmos is that we're all scientists trying to spend our energy to put together the best contraption possible. We do this by collecting and putting together parts of our machine that work together to give the most efficiency. Gizmos is an engine building game for two to four players that takes about 45 minutes to play. To win the game, you need the most victory points through the Gizmo cards and the victory points. But first, let's go over the setup. To set up the game, you first need to put together the energy dispenser, and then you drop all the marbles into it. Next, each player is going to randomly get handed a dashboard. So Aaron's is brown and mine is gray. Whoever gets the brown dashboard is going to be the first player. So all these little sections on here are just subcategories for where your gizmo cards are going to be going. Each player is also going to get an energy storage circle. In addition to that, each player also gets the starting gizmo card. You can tell us the starting gizmo card because it's level zero on the back here, and then you know where to place it based on the upper left hand corner. It has this little file right here. So under your dashboard, go ahead and place it under your file. Next, you're going to take out all of your level cards. So there's level one, two, and three. And so you're gonna shuffle each of those individually. Once you shuffle all the level ones, you're gonna put four of them face up, shuffle all the level twos, put three face up, and then shuffle number level three, and then put two cards face up. And then finally, you will wanna to put to the side all the victory points. All right, if we zoom in a little bit closer here, we can see each individual gizmo card a little bit better. Each gizmo card has a lot of information on it. For example, on the upper left-hand corner right here, it tells you where to put the card on your dashboard. Each card corresponds to one section in the dashboard. So this one right here is you would put underneath the file, underneath the upgrade, build, converter, and pick. If you look at the middle of the cards right here, you can read the effects by looking at the pictures. Once you familiarize yourself with the pictures, the game will go a little bit easier. So for example, this card right here, you can see that if you can use a black marble, a black energy, and you can spend it as any color you would like. We're just going to go over what we have on the board right here, but there are a lot more cards in these decks that show different effects. So if you run to an effect that you don't know, just look in the instruction manual or just um, figure out how to read the card through the pictures. So this card right here means if you build a red card, that means you get to pick any single marble that you like from the section. This card is an upgrade. That means you get to hold one extra marble in your ring or you can also file an extra card. This card we already talked about, so that's why I just skipped over here. This card is if you pick a red marble right here and put it in your energy ring, that means you get to randomly choose a marble. That means you reach into the top of this right here randomly and pick out a card and you get an extra marble. This one's a little bit weird. This one means that if you build a card that you earlier filed, which we'll talk about what that means later, that means you get to pick two cards from this section. This card means that you can convert two of your yellow marbles into any other color you'd like. This card you get to change one red marble and use it as two red marbles instead. This card says that if you file a card that means you get a victory point. And this card allows you to have upgrade of four extra marbles in your storage. In addition to the effects, the cards are also, also worth victory points. This upper left hand corner shows you how many victory points each card is worth. And then to build the gizmo cards, you have to spend the corresponding amount based on this number right here, which tells you how many marbles you have to spend, and this color right here, which means which color you have to spend. On your turn, you can do one action. That action, you have four to choose from, and we're gonna go ahead and start off with filing. 
To file a card, what you want to do is you look at all these face-up cards right here, and you can grab any one of them and just put it to the side. You kind of want to do this when there's a card that you can't afford that you really want, or if you kind of want to block your opponent from getting that card, right? So, when you file a card, you don't get its abilities, and you don't get its victory points. So if you don't build it by the end of the game, that means you don't get the victory points. So make sure you build that card before the game is over. At the start of the game, if you want to look at the filing right here, you can see that there's a one in that um, brown file. That means you can only file one card at the beginning of the game. Later on, you can upgrade that. That means that you can hold more than one card on the side. The second action that you can take is picking. This is where you there's the finger and it's picking a certain color marble. So what that means is I can pick any of these energy marbles and put it into my energy storage ring. So I want to look for look and see what card am I potentially trying to go for. So let's say I want to get one of these red cards up here for one energy. I'm going to say, okay, I want to pick this red energy. I just put it in my energy storage ring. The amount of energy marbles that you can have in here is located on your dashboard. So where there's two hands holding a marble, that's where, and then there's a number five in there. That means that each player can start off with five energy marbles in their energy storage ring. There's gonna be upgrades later on in the game where you can expand and add more space for your energy storage ring. Um, one thing to not be confused about is there's like a picking action where that's your action for the turn. That's what you are doing. And then there's one with like a black box and a question mark on top of it, like right here. And what that means is that's going to be a reaction of something. That's where you get to blindly pick a marble out of the top and then that would get put into your energy storage ring. But that is not an action. That's just a reaction from one of your turns. Sometimes it's going to get a little bit confusing, so make sure that you know the difference between the two. Alright, and then the third action that you can take is the build action. This build action means that you're looking either at the display right here or maybe you filed the card earlier. And then now you can spend the appropriate amount of energy and then put that in your dashboard, right? So for example, Kelly was looking at these two cards right here before and she picked a red marble. So now if she wants to build one of these cards, she can go ahead and drop the red marble in the dispenser, grab the card, and then put it underneath her dashboard. To know where to put it, she's looking at the upper left hand corner right here and we talked about earlier that arrow means converter, so she's going to go ahead and put it underneath the converter. So after you build a card, go ahead and replace it with the next card in the pile. The last action you can take is researching. This is where I can look at a level 1, 2, or 3, I can look at the top cards and see if there is something in there that I want to potentially build. So, if you look at the magnifying glass, it says that you can re research three cards. So, I'm going to choose a level that maybe I want to try to build from. I'm going to look at my level two. So, I'm going to choose the top three cards. <clears throat> and there are three actions that you can take with this. The first action is if you look at these and you think, you know, I don't really want to build any of these. None of them really look super good for what I'm doing. I can just take all these three put them back underneath the bottom of the level 2 deck and just call that my turn. I researched, but I didn't want to do anything with it. The second thing you could do is if you look and you see that you have enough energy marbles to build something that you researched, you can go ahead and just take that card and build it right away. The last thing you could do is if you're looking and you see, oh man, there's a really good card in here that I really want to build, I can file it just like what Aaron was saying before. I can just take it put it to the side, and then hopefully be able to build it later on, next turn, whenever. So then with these remain, remaining two cards, I'm just going to put these on the bottom of the deck, and that would be my action. Next, we have a chain reaction. Each card has a specific ability that allows you to perform more than your original one action per turn allowed. Put these abilities together, and you can have a chain reaction that will help you win the game. This is honestly one of the coolest parts of the game, so follow along. When you take one of the four available actions, a card effect could potentially get triggered. So for example, I have this set up right here with this being our example dashboard and this being the example display. 
Now, what you have to think about is what car do we want to buy? We might be thinking we want to buy this car right here, but remember that we can only use each car one time. So we have two blue marbles right here, and this car costs two red marbles. We have this blue converter that can change a blue marble to anything, but we can only use this one time, so we can't change this to both of them to red marbles. So we're going to convert one of these blue marbles into a yellow marble, and when we spend it, we drop it in the dispenser right here, and that means we just built this car. And then when we build this car, we're going to put it underneath the pick category because that's the upper left hand corner right here and then put it right there. Now we have to go ahead and look, are there any chain reactions that could possibly happen? So we just built a yellow. That means we look under our build category and we see that we have a building a yellow right here. This says if we build a yellow, that means we get to pick any uh, marble that we want. So here goes the chain reaction. We're going to go ahead and pick a yellow marble and put it in our ring. Because we just picked our yellow marble, our next card gets activated. We're going to randomly pick a marble right here. So we're going to reach in here and I just picked out a marble. It's a red marble and you're going to put that in your ring. Just because you picked out a red marble right here doesn't mean that this card gets activated. Just because you built this card this turn doesn't mean this card can't activate. But because you picked this marble randomly from the dispenser, that means that you didn't pick the marble, but is randomly chosen. So this does not get activated. And then that is the end of your turn. To master this game, you really have to be thinking how your cards can work together to build the best machine possible. Okay, so the time is finally here. To end the game, here's what needs to happen. The game is over when one of the players gets a total of 16 cards built underneath their dashboard. That's one way the game is over. The second way the game is over is if there's four level three cards that are built underneath your dashboard. And just a little hint here, when you're looking at your level three cards, these have like a brownish gold background up top and level ones and twos have a gray background on, on top. So that's just a quick little way to determine without flipping them over to see how many level three cards you have, have built. So the game is over when either you get 16 cards or you have built four level three cards. So the person who ends the game doesn't necessarily win though. So to find the winner, you are going to count how many victory points that you have. So remember those victory points are in the top right hand corner of your cards and that's how you're going to be counting your points. Remember to count your victory points as well if you have earned those along the way. So whoever has the most victory points wins. If for some reason you tie, you, you look to see who has the most cards built underneath your dashboard. So whoever has most cards would win. But again, if there is a tie, then you're going to look at your energy storage circle. Whoever has the most energy marbles in their storage ring is the winner. But wait, there's more. If that is also a tie, then it's just going to be the person who went last in their turn order. One other thing to remember is that Aaron is player one because he had that brown dashboard. If he gets his 16 cards and the game is over, I get an extra turn because it's not fair that he got more turns than I did. So then I would get an extra turn if we were playing with more people then they would get turns as well. However, if I got 16 cards first or four level three cards down here first, then Aaron would not get another turn because he's had the exact same amount of turns that I have had as well. And that concludes our video on how to play Gizmos. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you play your first game. If you don't have the game yet and you're interested in buying the game, go ahead and check out our description down below. If you're interested in a playthrough or tips and tricks of Gizmos, be sure to watch our next video. If you want to support our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe.